Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Tuesday Chats at Whitey's. Um, tonight we have M. Sauter of Pints and Panels, who are super excited. I've been nervous, a little nervous about this all day. She is, not only is she on this can, but she's done a lot of really cool, can you see her? Because it's kind of a weird, I got to I gotta figure out my new light. My new light's too bright. How's that? Is that better? Anyway, she's on this can somewhere, right here. I'll back it up. It's the lights too bright. But anyway, she's on that can. So we're gonna talk about that. And then we'll talk about we'll talk about all kinds of stuff because she has a probably the coolest career in beer of people I've ever talked to. So without further ado, good evening. How are you? I caught you mid drink. Uh, uh, I'm hoping yeah. I can get your your face on the can. I can't get it to shine. Isn't that weird? I, know, I wish I, I have a new have, light, and I'm not really. What's that? I don't have one up in my office. I have them in the fridge downstairs. It's really shiny, it's and shiny. I don't remember. I had um, Hannah on a couple weeks ago. Oh, nice! And it wasn't nearly as shiny. She's the great. can was not nearly as shiny. So yeah. you must maybe you're a biggest star in the universe. So that we is not accurate, but thank you. <laughs> so how how's everything going? Good. Good, good, busy. I'm pretty excited good. about this chat. I got to tell you. Thank you. Well, thank you because for um, you you have a tell us a little bit about your background. I I just think this is so interesting. The whole cartoon thing and the Master Cicerone, and I was just listening to the Goodwill Hunting. Oh gosh, um, where I swear a lot. <laughs> yeah, on on that, uh, I didn't really notice that, but I did, oh, okay. and um. Just everything. So give us a little bit of background, because some people maybe know you just from Instagram or your website or whatever, but don't really know yeah. what's, what's up. So I'm M. Sauter. I'm the creator and founder, or creator and founder, let's say more, uh, and cartoonist behind Pints and Panels, which started in 2010 when I was in graduate school for cartooning at the Center for Cartoon Studies in White River Junction where I graduated in 2011. It's a real place in Vermont. <laughs> it's in an old department store. Now it's in the old post office. But when I went there, it was in the old department store in town. And uh, living in Vermont at that time was great because there was great beer everywhere. Um, and I started Pines and Panels there as a beer review site where I would draw in comic form. And then in 2019, I switched to beer education. So Pines and Panels has been around for 11 and a half years, but at the same time, it really hasn't focused on beer education. That's been the last like year and a half or so. And so I do comics about beer. I have two books, one book out 2017 called uh, Beers for Everyone. And then I did uh, I have a book coming out from Brewers Publications in 2022 called Hooray for Craft Beer, which I'm super excited about. That comes out in April. Uh, and I just drew, draw visual beer education. So I'm doing comics about beer styles, flavor, brewing, food. Uh, tomorrow is uh, my first beer and holiday cooking pairing infographic, which I'm very excited about. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. So you, Well, you did this one. I, I did load this one up so people can see yeah. some of your work. If I can get my cursor to work here. I'm having difficulties. So here we go. Um, for Thanksgiving. So this one came out on, on Thanksgiving and it, yep. it had basically brown ale with stuffing, mashed potatoes, the dark mild. So this is all basically on your Instagram. People can check all these things out on your Instagram, yep. which we're going to get into it a little bit because when I, I was listening to the um, Goodwill Hunting, good the Good Beer Hunting podcast mm -hmm. and um, when was that recorded? 2019. So it was a little bit before the blow up of Instagram, right? So I feel like... It... Yeah. I mean, Pints and Panels was, didn't have... A, the, the following now is crazy. I, people from all over the world follow Pints and Panels. I've translated into multiple languages by people who just ask. And then I'm taught in beer schools all over the world. It's super humbling and that's very new um so the following on instagram especially for pens and panels hasn't really it's been about the past year where it's really taken off and i've been honored that people would 
use my work to study and learn about beer. I think I, I feel like that's such a good platform for what you do, though, to get the word out that ha hasn't really, I mean, it's been around for a bit, obviously, but mm -hmm. like it really helps blow that kind of thing up where like people can see what you're talking about. And those, it, on those, the cartoons and on the Instagram, are those in the book or are there are different ones or how, like, yeah, so uh, how do you get motivated to do all these cartoons? That's really I work, I work all the time. Really? <laughs> like I'm getting over a head cold um, and I did have time for a nap today, but nice. I, I was working right up until we we're actually having this conversation. Um, it's the Christmas time. I do a lot of commissions um, where, um, so I've been doing a lot of people's favorite beers or their favorite bars or wedding photos or Christmas cards or drawing my dog on the beach. And I go, dogs are really hard to draw, but I'll try my best. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of that right now. So I have one I was going to send you, but it's, it's, we're, we're beyond the deadline. So I'll have to do it for yes. after you're busy. Your, your deadline was like December 1st. It was. Yeah. I, I haven't had anyone. People have been very good about the deadline. Um, so it's just cause I don't win a lot of, so when you draw it, I get 10, I have, I give myself 10 days and I usually beat that by a couple right. of days. And then the printer has to print it though on top of that. You can get a JPEG only or you can get the printer. So I have to work in the amount of time the printer will take to print it. I have a great printer that I work with um, that does very good high quality fine art prints. So okay. when you get Pints and Panels work, it always looks super, super good. So I'm very pleased with, but so I had to time that in as well. So it's been... And then when I've like other stuff on top of it, it's been just, it's been very, very hectic, um, but fun. I love to draw. So I get to, the fact that I get to draw for a living is a dream come. It, the three-year-old in me is just very excited about that. So <laughs> what, you're a cartoonist. So you had to have, when you grew up, you had to have a favorite cartoon. I mean, how does so? How does one get into cartoon? I so being a my, cartoonist. My work is slightly based off of Archie comics. I really loved the Archie comics when I was eleven. Okay. And I would try to emulate them, and that's where my art style comes from. It's me futzing around in six period study hall, trying to draw. Well, trying not to get caught reading comics because kids can read. I'm so jealous of kids who get kids can read comics now all they want. Right. Uh, like with Diary of a Wimpy Kid and all that, like all of those like young, like YA comics. Like we didn't have that when I was a kid. Right. Um, you couldn't read com comics were like the thing you that your fa parents found and they threw in the trash. So <laughs> now comics are huge business and a big deal. So it's it's nice to see like Everybody, like most of my readership, when you look at the insights, are much younger, 25, right. 26, because um, they grew up with getting to read comics as like literature. And I'm so jealous of, of that. I never got that. And so I was, when I was a kid, I, I watched a lot of like, I loved Scooby Doo. I read, okay. and, and like Hanna Barbera, I watched a lot of Hanna Barbera. So Jetsons, Flintstones. Scooby Doo. So the so yeah. the classic cartoons. Yeah, classic. All that stuff on USA Network, um, like in the like early mm -hmm. nineties, late eighties. You know, that's the stuff that I really, really liked as a kid. Um, especially Scooby Doo. I don't really know. My husband and I just read because Scooby. All the Scooby Doo's are on HBO Max. Like, yeah, they're probably on some streaming service. Yeah, I'm sure. and we watch one of them, and we're like, "What the hell?" Is this? <laughs> <laughs> why did we like this yeah why did why, why was this popular um it's just i mean it's this if you watch too many of them you're like uh, obviously it's that man like you, they're very easy uh but when you're like six and it's you know you, your family has a limited amount of channels and you're you know it's 1989 like yeah you're gonna you gotta get yeah. to it and i really i yeah i always really liked scooby-doo a lot as a kid um, yeah, I've never been. Well, I'm a little older than you, but I was never a scoop. I I grew up with the um. This is really, you probably don't remember, but like the banana splits and stuff, was, like the really trippy seventy late seventy stuff, like really trippy, like the banana splits and like all those weird live action ones. 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah, like a cat, like a, like the electric company and like all yeah, that. Yeah, but even more cartoony than that. Okay. Look, yeah, like so there was a lot of like weird live action, pretty trippy, spacey stuff back then. That like, like but I'm trying to think of the other ones like Banana Split. So they were all Sid and Marty Croft stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah, like a Captain so, Kangaroo type. Yeah, so it was like they had actors. It was. It, they were really weird, but like obviously the Jetsons was still around and that mm. kind of Flintstones and all the classic Hanna Barberas, but Huckleberry Finn and all that kind of stuff. So that's interesting. I was I was saying to my wife this morning. I said she probably doesn't get asked about her favorite cartoons much, even though she's a cartoonist. No one really right. asks me about cartooning, actually. Yeah, Most I, people I, just ask me about beer. Although I will say, um, we were working on the blurb for my book, and my editor at first publication was like oh do you have a cartoonist friend that could write your blurb and I I have a lot of friends who are cartoonists but like there's ones that she listed and I'm like those are really famous and they are not like we're like, we, we did not on the same plane um I had some yeah um but a lot of my classmates from the center for cartoon studies have gone on to do some really amazing things it has a very stellar alumni so it's been really cool to... Do like people that yeah. go there, do they go off to Disney and do they go no. off to... So it's, all, off? it's all uh, like small press stuff. So it's um, like all the... In, like um, uh, um, this person, Melanie Gilman, who was a great below me, they uh, just sold their work to Random House for probably a lot of money. Um, okay. Their, their stuff, they do queer fantasy. Like it's it's... Snow White, but Snow White is gay. Or like she, uh, they do a lot of like different. Like there's her stuff's really great, or their stuff's really great. Interesting. I'm working on the pronouns. Um, yeah, they did. Uh, what was it? It was like a summer camp, dude ranch thing that they did at school. That was really cool. Like all colored pencils, really well drawn. Um, some of my other classmates have sold their. Um, comics to netflix their shows now so it's pretty yeah I, yeah. I, yeah I can imagine where that would be something that like mm -hmm. nowadays with netflix and all that sort of streaming services if you're into that and you can really probably do pretty well with having your own with your own netflix show because there's a netflix show for everything oh yeah um my uh a guy in the grade above me chuck forsman sold his two of his works our Netflix shows now, and I mean, he got to go to the BAFTAs in England, um, and he had famous. They were like really well received, so really weird, messed up stuff. But people like that, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, That's but it's it's cool. It's cool to see how everyone takes the talent that they have or the passion that they have. Like I, I'm an okay artist. I wouldn't say I was a great artist. And but I have a passion for beer, and a, how can you kind of turn that? Um, it's there's a place for everybody, and I mm -hmm. really I really like that about the art world, especially the cartooning world. Is like I look at all my friends from school, like from grad school, and like see what they're doing, and they're all most of them. We had a ten year reunion on Zoom um, in May or June, and a lot, most of them are still drawing, you know, and still working at it. So, which is pretty cool. It's, it's, you know, I've been drawing my whole life. When you, once you start drawing and you love it, you always do it. Um, right. I'm constantly I, drawing. So, like, when you wake up, you're like, oh, today I'm going to talk about golding hops, <laughs> or, or how does that, like, how does, what is, where's the inspiration from? I do have like a to-do list, a very extensive to-do list. Uh, I get most of my inspiration while I'm driving. So okay. like I'll be driving and I'll be or if I when I first wake up in the morning um, and I'll be like, oh, I should do like what's the best beer for like days of the month, like a year in beer infographic. And I'm like, oh, write that. I pull over, write it down. Um, and or like I'll do, oh, hop variety simple. So I have a checklist of all the hops. Uh, which ones have I done? Um, oh, I and my website is usually pre done. So like. Everything's all queued up until about 
when I was working on my book, I had it queued up for the next six. So I had six months of content already done and it would just, really? auto, yeah, it would just auto. Wow. Work. So I can like, yeah, focus on that. Now I'm down to about two to three months. So I just handed in, the book was copy edited and it was handed in last week. So now I'm. So when's that due yeah. for publication? It will be published April 25th. Okay. Uh, but it goes to the printer, I think, next month. So they're working on laying it out right now. So I just handed them everything about a week ago. But it, it's been drawn since August. Um, but I've got, you know, other freelance stuff, commissions. Things show up a lot. I'm doing a beer label for a brewery in uh, Washington State. The beer oh, label. really? I was going to add, that was one of my questions. I was like, yeah. has any has anybody ever actually approached you about doing beer labels? Because I feel like that is pretty big business now. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's so competitive on the shelves, they people want unique graphics on their labels so they pop off the shelf. Yeah, so I've done I've done one bottle label before. That's it for my local brewery relic, which they're in Plainville, and I did that okay. seven years ago. So this will be my first can art, and it's a Munich Dunkel. They let me choose the style. They're like, "We love your work. Uh, we'll brew whatever you want, and you can draw it. We'll pay you." And I was like. You're going to brew Munich Dunkel then, because I love Munich. More Munich Dunkel. <laughs> I love Munich Dunkels. Um, and they were like, yeah, sure, whatever, no problem. Um, so it's like, um, I actually haven't told them my thought yet, but I really want to do like a Van Gogh style Starry Night, but it's, mm-hmm. but it's the Munich skyline, so it's the Munich night. Um, oh, very good. have it real dark. So, And then there's a brewery in... Berkeley, that's the clean version. That's rare bar- rare barrel owns it. They're sour brewery. Um, they do a they own a brewery called Hello Friend, which is they hire artists and it just rotates. So every like month there's a different beer and okay. a different artist. And they asked me to draw for them. And I was like, Can we wait till after Christmas? And they said, Yeah, fine. So um, I'm hoping to go to San Francisco Beer Week in February, barring covid issues um so um and go to plenty the younger release because if you've never done that that's worth i've that. never been uh, it's it's i've had it but i've never been out there i've been i mean one, i've never yeah. been there i went i have never been to windsor their new facility but i went five years ago to when they did it at santa rosa the first day it was released uh my good friend jay brooks took me um and it was awesome. So lots of beer, pizza, good conversation. It was a lot of fun. So there's really cheap flights right now. I know that like, you know, we should all be careful and get vaccinated and boosted and whatnot. But there's a really cheap flight to San Francisco. And I was like, hmm. Mm, I'm out there. I'm, he- yeah, I'm, heading, so, I'm heading west, young man. Yeah. yeah why not? Yeah, $180 round trip nonstop. Okay. Do you feel like the... um? Is California still a big scene for beer or is is the East Coast or is there another sort of hot spot there's, that there's good beer everywhere. Right? That's, that's the best. I like I love how like weird town like Richmond, Virginia is a great beer town. Um, mm-hmm. there's just all these like really, you know, I mean Richmond's a nice city, don't get me wrong. But there are a lot of like who thought Chicago would have the number one concentration of breweries in the country? Um, I didn't think so. I didn't um, know. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they have over two hundred breweries in Chicagoland alone. So there's so much good beer out there, and there's, you know, I live in a town of seventy thousand people. We have two breweries, and they're both pretty good. So and you're not far from like two roads, and yeah, two roads is like fifty minutes from me. Right. Um, in my like where I live, because I live outside of Hartford. I've got maybe 10 breweries within a 15, 20 minute drive from me. So. And I saw you were up in Worcester a couple of weeks ago. Oh, at yeah. Arm Space. At love, Arm Space yeah. Abbey. That yeah. Place is, yeah. It's, I love And they I, have like a bazillion breweries there. I was just oh, up yeah. there a little while ago because my, my father in law um, and my wife are from uh, Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. So I was just up there and I was shocked. I mean, it was like, I probably hit like five breweries and like in small towns on the way, on the way down 146 and like all kinds of spots. It's like, 
it's blown up so much. It's incredible. And there's so much for the sh on the shelves, you know. Uh, you travel down this way a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, Towards yeah. The, in the, uh, in, you know, the D.C. metro area. Yeah, Are there particular family. breweries you... Ooh, uh, I really like Three Stars. Okay. Um, that's near where my cousin lives in Tacoma Park. So okay. I um, let's. I mean, I just want to like go to Church Key and like sit at the stool and then have them bring me beer. To be honest, uh, the DC beer or Sovereign, the DC beer scene is so great because you don't have distribution laws. <laughs> so like, you could go to Sovereign and be like, "Yeah, bring me that." Like, I mean, you're gonna pay for it; it's extremely expensive. But like, bring me that Cantillon bottle or like bring me a Westy Twelve, and they'll right. have it. That's crazy to me that that exists um other breweries that um union is quite good for beer um i like good interesting beer. that union is now employee owned as I of know, today I, I saw that their old pro goza is a great classic goza i really like that beer a lot uh my aunt and uncle live in freeland maryland okay so they when they come and visit they um bring me like she's like I, I brought you this and like it's always just something random and I'm like oh cool thank you you know there's a lot of I'm trying to think of there's everyone kind of forgets that Port City wins a lot of awards and I really like their their beers are quite good we used to get it in Connecticut I don't know if we do anymore um there's it's just there's good beer everywhere really yeah I mean it used to be like one of those things when we used to go to Vermont Mm -hmm. You know, you you would always bring stuff back, right? Because you couldn't get it anywhere. And like the last few times, like we were just up there in August. And I remember like two years ago was the last time we were up there. And like I searched high and low for Upper Pass mm -hmm. beer. And I, like finally I found one at Stowe Public House or whatever. And it was a guy's experimental thing. And he was like, he did this thing where... We, he could find out where the hops were breaking down, so how long it was good on the shelf. He was very into it, oh, and um, so oh. he sold me his the like the last four pack he had, and this time I went up and there was a gas station a quarter mile from the hotel, and it was on the shelf in the gas station. Yep. That beer yep. I searched all over the place for, so I don't know if that was a COVID thing, which probably, partially, or just because it's just such an explosion of beer there. I mean, there. Yeah, we get we get a lot. We get Focal Banger and Heady Topper down in Connecticut, which is right. And yeah. and they used to brew. I don't know. If, I don't think they do anymore. Lawson's used to brew Sip of Sunshine at Two Roads. Uh, that, I believe they still do. Okay. Yeah. All the all the bigger ones. Yeah. All, all, yeah. All, all the uh, that because that's probably the most popular beer mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. So it's just amazing, like how. And it's really east to west, right? Like, I know that, I mean, Chicago's got a, a lot of breweries, but you don't hear, like, they don't have the hype breweries. They, oh, they do. But they have, like, it's the thing about hype is it's super, it can be, but it's super regionalized. So right. Chicago Fair. has, like, Hot Butcher, uh, which is a real hype brand. Um, there's all these different, like, brands you've never heard of that to people like in that state or that area are like the, like it's, it's really interesting how the hype has gotten. It's, I mean, yeah, there's still like, you know, your tree houses and whatnot, but then the rest of it, the hype has gotten very local because I'm sure there's stuff down where you are that I've never heard of before that people go nuts for. And I'm just like, Oh, like that's what the best part about traveling is like, I went to, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, a couple years ago, for to take a class at the Micromatic School, like their draft school, and I was like, I'm in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Like, what the heck is out here? And they were like, Oh, <laughs> you got to go to like Bond Place. You got to go like. And I went to Bond Place, and I was like, Holy crap, this brewery is amazing! And it was a ten minute walk from my hotel, and so I just got to like saunter down the street and drink pub ale and hang out in their cool tasting room and then saunter home. And I thought that was like, it's cool how like there's just good beer everywhere. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of bad beer, but there's a lot of good beer too. And that's the fun, exciting part about craft beer right now. Yeah. I feel, yeah. I mean, we have a place I sent you the can that we did the collab mm -hmm. with. Um, and that place is like 15 minutes from my house. And I'm in a pretty like 
suburban, more rural area. That place is 15 minutes, and the beers, and there's probably four breweries within like 20 minutes of my, where I live now, which is crazy. It's the explosion of it is just it is just so insane. Now, when did you get your master sister room? Oh, I'm not a master sister. Oh, you? Oh, <laughs> that didn't happen. You didn't, you just advanced. I'm just I'm just an advanced. <laughs> Are you going to take the test again? I don't know, actually. Um, I may. Uh, they offered it actually a month ago. Uh, about five weeks ago, actually, and only five people took it. But I didn't feel comfortable traveling. And with my workload, I didn't have time to study. So right. like, who knows? Um, but they're offering it again next spring. But I'm I'm still on the fence about if I'm going to take it or not. Because um, some people probably don't even really know what a Cicerone is. Like, you have to know everything about beer, not just like, like in wine, you don't have to know how it draft system works right you just have to know flavors of wine but in beer for a cicerone you have to know draft you have to know all kinds of stuff way oh, more no. than like wine would have to know it's it's really tough i mean there are only 19 people who have ever passed it and it's really really tough i mean they you know the there's the there's a draft component of the exam where like you will probably cut yourself or spray beer on yourself, or both. Um, <laughs> luckily, I didn't spray beer on myself, but I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it because it's something like incredibly minute, like the check ball is missing in the coupler, or there's like some seal that's loose. Like it's really crazy how involved they make it. So, like it's 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 super super tough. So. I, yeah, I've never done well on the draft component part of, uh, but I've cleaned draft lines and I know how to like work with right. them and take them apart. And that there's a maintenance, like beer is maintenance, beer is science, beer is, you know, culinary, beer is magic. It's kind of, there's a lot. Um, the maintenance portion of it uh, usually is what stumps people. So, yeah, I mean, I can, I mean, I can. Under I can understand that. Like most people, most people probably go into that and not really realize that that's a big portion of, as you get more advanced in Cicerone, because the early Cicerone is just basically glassware and things like that and basic, basic beer knowledge. But as you get more advanced, it gets really advanced. It does. It really does. So it's a lot of work. Um, and the people who took it, like, you know, I hope someone passed, who knows? I uh, will probably know next week, I guess. Um, it would be cool to have someone be the 20th. I don't, you know. But it's just, yeah, it's a lot of work and time to take it. And I don't know if I, I don't know if, I don't know if I have the time anymore, to be honest. Right. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Where, like, I heard you on that podcast saying it was like 400 hours of studying. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, and if, you have other, if you have other stuff going on, that's mm -hmm. really hard. I like I you know, and, and uh, there's classes you need to take that are really expensive that will help you pass. There's a lot of stuff, and it's just a lot of time and a lot of money. So it's, but that's not to mitigate the fact that it's not important. I think the Cicerone program, especially the lower level one and level two, are incredibly important for people to further their careers um, and gain beer knowledge. So. Yeah, I agree with that. And like, you're also a beer judge. Have you been doing a, a lot of judging or not as much? I haven't judged a beer competition in over two years, uh, mostly because of COVID. Um, and then it's, I, I've been asked to judge and it doesn't like, I got asked to judge in Brazil and it looked awesome, but it was during Thanksgiving week and I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. Um, Is that because of beer and food? Or is it the whole combination? Of why I love, it's my favorite holiday too. I, so. love, I like my family. A lot of people don't, but I really like my family a lot. Uh, I like the ritual. Uh, my mom is a very good cook. All my families are very good cooks, so the food is always very good. Um, I like the dog show. Okay. <laughs> and I don't drink beer on Thanksgiving. I drink. We drink white wine. That is really? the only, yes. We drink. I bring 
multiple bottles of, I used to live in Oregon for a year. I bring multiple bottles of Oregon Pinot Gris. And that is what I drink on Thanksgiving. Not to, you know, I mean, beer works really with tr triple with turkey, saison, all that stuff. I just, my family wants white wine. We drink white wine. Um, yeah, it's it, also, beer's a little bit more filling. But I also, in a lot of ways, to me, especially for with food, beer is better, a better thing for pairing food within wine in a lot of ways. Because there's so many nuances in beer mm -hmm. that don't exist in wine that pick up different aspects of all, of all foods. Yep. I, beer and food is really great. I just, it's, it's also my, my family likes beer, but they're not going to drink beer on Thanksgiving. So we just Oregon, P, Oregon Pinot Gris and Sauvignon Blancs and there's pie. And I love, I just love Thanksgiving. It's my, I really. I, I, th the other good thing about Thanksgiving is it's like, which is why it's sort of a no, there's no expectation. It's a no expectation holiday. There's no, you know gift, what I mean? Like, there's no the, gift giving. When you get into this yeah. time of year, everybody's like, oh, this, this, this. You know what I mean? And it's, you got, it's for everybody. That's the thing right. about that for Thanksgiving. It's for, it's the one day where most things are closed. It's for every American. Or if you, we had our friend from Australia visiting who had never experienced Thanksgiving. He enjoyed it. He's not American. Um, but he got into it and it's, that's the thing about Thanksgiving. That's great. Is that it's just everyone sitting around and being thankful and happy. And that's and, the best part about Thanksgiving. I and Thanksgiving. being, being with, with, with family and mm -hmm. enjoying and, and enjoying the time. And there's, there's football on and yep. people are doing this and people doing that. It's a very, it's, it's easily, it's my favorite holiday because it's the most chill holiday. And, you yeah. Know, unless you, you're cooking. My mom. You have to first. listen to Alice's restaurant. Yeah, we that. did. Yep, they play it you know every that. hour on the hour, so we listen to it twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's especially in New England. Yes. <laughs> every radio station has to play it at least once. They play. We were. It was on when we got to my mom's house, and it was on when we were leaving my mom's house. Um, so yes, we listened to it twice. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, it's a sin. Yeah, um, well, especially yeah, us New Englanders. That's a. It's important, yeah, exactly. It's important to our culture. Exactly. Um, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the rap magnet stuff. Just sure. we're going to we're going to touch on it. Here is your drawing for it, which I love. Let me see if I can bring it up here on the screen. I, this is I love this. This is a fantastic jar drawing. I love it. It's my fa probably my favorite piece that you've done. Thank you. Um, you're a little tangential to actual being in Bruce. Now you work at Fox Farm a little bit, right? I do. I'm only there one day a week, though. We just actually released um, this. Oh, the Brave Noise beer, Brave right? Noise, yes, yep. I saw that today in Instagram. Well, so yeah. congratulations on that. Yeah. How did that I, come out? It was so after everything came about, um, we had we like it was like a discussion after work one day like uh, the owners sat us all but not sat us all down but we were just talking about it and they were like how do you feel like is this a good working environment there's only eight of us that work there or mm -hmm. nine it's actually quite small um and it's majority female um i think it's five i don't know five females four males five males maybe it's 50 50 um there's not a lot, again not a lot of people that work there and everyone the owner zach is just the nicest friendliest coolest guy and you know he always wants to do right always wants he always is you know very making sure that everyone's taken care of um and he was you know are, are we doing everything right can we do anything better and then when brave noise came about we actually were like we didn't think we needed to brew it which was kind of a weird like we were like no like we're we're you know we've we've got a a good thing going here. We all know that we're taken care of. We already have kind of a code of conduct in place. Everyone's treated well. And then the fact that no one really brewed it, um, the brewers were like, no, no, let's brew this. This is important. And so that's how it got decided. Yeah, they, they, there weren't a ton of places down here. There's uh, um, a woman-owned brewery over on the Eastern Shore called Ten Ike. Mm -hmm. um, they brewed it. Maybe there was a place in D.C. There wasn't a lot of places that did it. I see more and more because I follow all those 
things on Instagram, I see, I see it coming more often, but it's pretty widespread. It wasn't like the black is beautiful thing yeah. where I feel like a lot of people brewed that beer or, or, but in that style with that label. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And I don't, I, I mean, I don't know how, if it's getting better. Yeah. I, uh... it, it, it's, it's one of those things where like <sighs> the accountability part of it is what makes it, how, how are people being held accountable? Yeah. And you don't yeah. know. Cause it's, it's it, we just have to keep talking. Like I, when the when it first came to light in May, I was actually in Maine, um, and I was like on my phone, like, obsessively like following the stories, and they were all like incredibly heartbreaking. And you know, everyone's experienced something. You know, right. everyone, everyone's got it, and that sucks. Like, why would you want to like work? You know, why do we put up with that? Um, and so it, we it, but keeping our feet like foot on the gas. And keeping the talking about it, I think, is incredibly important. Um, making sure people are held accountable. Um, if there are breweries that aren't holding people accountable, don't drink their beer. You know, it's, right. it's use your wallet, use your common sense. Um, it's 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 important, really. And I, you know, I wanted to help them out. I donated a commission to their the uh, beers for everyone is doing a fundraiser, so I'm helping out with that. Um, all my sales from I do I have a sticker of recommending stickers um, and I do art prints as well for posters. Uh, all the, that money goes to or half of it I believe um, goes to the Women of the Revolution mm -hmm. Fund. You know because that's important. You know we ought to look out for each other. And working at Fox Farm is an incredibly you know rewarding place to work where they really do take care of us. Um, I'm. I'm, I'm not there. I used to be there during COVID. I was there 20 plus hours a week working curbside because there wasn't that many of us. Now we have two new full-time employees. Okay. Um, and with pints and panels taking up more of my time, I only work on Saturdays. Um, but it's a, still a really nice place to work. I'm really thankful that, and I've been there for three and a half years now. Um, yeah. So, and it keeps you in the, it, it keeps you in the loop with a lot of stuff going on too with beers and, and do you, do you like beers with a lot of adjuncts in them? I like all beer. I don't particularly enjoy, that's not to say that I won't drink them, um, fruited sours. I just find them very sweet and not. Like the really impressive. thick ones? Yeah, the thick ones. They're not, that's not for me. That's for a they sell really well and people really like them. I don't particularly like the fact that a lot of them explode. That's, right. and that's upsetting. To me, there's not a thing. There's not a lot that I don't like about the industry. That's one thing where, like, don't put unfermented stuff <laughs> in a can. Right? Yeah. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick them on. That's common sense. Don't do that. Um, but like, I, I people really like them, and so or people really like that style. Um, they're not really for me. I do. I like, like my beer yeah. to be more viscous. I like, I mean, I like an adjuncty stout. I can, I had a, um, I live quite close to 12%, which is okay. a contract facility that does a lot of, of like hype style, like there's Timber Yeah, they do like Fat Orange Cat. And yeah, Fat like... Orange Cat, Abomination, Marlowe. Um, they do the Stillwater Evil Twin stuff. Um, they do a bunch of stuff. And I went there, um, last weekend actually and i had one of the like maple syrup coconut i don't know lots of extra like adjunct stouts just a little and it's it's like when it's just a little it's really they're really they're quite good i can see why they're popular um, yeah i mean this there's a few i really like i mean i like my i don't like them as thick as some of them are but mm -hmm. there are a, a few i've had a few that i i really enjoy but like i say i'm more of on the viscous side, like I like beer to kind of be more beery. Yeah, I like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I get that, and that's 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 the best part about beer is everyone has a taste, everyone has a thing that they really like, that they really enjoy, uh, and that there's a beer for you in that regard. Um, 
there's so much out there that's really exciting. That's what I really like about beer. I mean, I'll drink pretty much anything. I'll try just yeah. about anything. Yeah. Um, I don't want like 16 ounces of like an adjunct stout or a fruited sour. That's just a little too much for me. Um, but that's my opinion. Um, I mean, I, I like, I know I went to a party on Saturday and I like went straight. I brought like two cases of like Fox farm and there was like Treehouse, and like, I know it was like all sorts of stuff from the brewery that people had brought us. So I was like, Oh, I'll bring this. And there was lots of different, you know, threes and Finback and, I was like halfway crooks from Atlanta. There was a bunch of stuff in there that I was just like, sure of that. Uh, and I went straight for the Miller, <laughs> Miller Light. I was like, oh, Miller Light. Oh, Miller Light. That sounds great. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I've seen stuff where you had the one cartoon when, um, when uh, on Black Friday for the Goose Island release about how like people are all anti AB. To that one day and then all of a sudden they're standing in line for this stuff and i i, I got a kick out of that because that's that's kind of true so, so and the thing yeah. about ab is yeah okay like back in the day they were doing some like like they've you know all you know they their their marketing practices aren't great but at the same time like their breweries are union and they pay really really well they do a lot of r d for new hop and malt varieties um you know, everyone I know who works there is paid extremely well uh, and taken care of. So it's very interesting how, like, everyone's like, oh, Budweiser sucks. And then, like, drink the local brewery. That local brewery makes, like, 15, it makes minimum weight. Like, it's such a weird, like, Yeah, I don't know. And, and the thing is, though, the one thing about AB is the quality control is, like, you can't beat quality oh. control there. Like, and that's why you see a lot of places – they'll go after AB brewers because they know mm -hmm. that those people know what's up. I mean, that's just a fact. Those people know, like they're trained and, and they know what's going, what's going on. It's, in, so, it's I, industrial. Like it's an industrial, it's like food science and engineering. Like they're, bre I've taken the tour at the Fort Collins brewery, the AB okay. brewery twice. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's just really fascinating to see beer to that scale and then brewed quite well. I mean, the Budweiser I get is made in Merrimack, New Hampshire. And I can't taste the difference between Merrimack, New Hampshire and like Fort Collins. Yeah, I, I or think about that because it's all over the country, different yeah, water, different, different water. Yeah. And it, it's like the McDonald's idea where a Big Mac tastes the same way, mm -hmm. same way in like Japan as it does yeah. here. But it, I mean, here we probably get more Williamsburg. But like the can, the stuff made in New Jersey it tastes like the stuff made in St. Louis. I remember being yeah. a kid and looking and being like, "Oh, this is a St. Louis one," and being excited that it was like a it, it was like from St. Louis. Oh. I hear I have been told the Merrimack Brewery makes the best beer. They have like an internal competition. Really? And the well, Merrimack, there you go. I, and I the Merrimack one wins every year, is what I've been told. Yeah, I mean I've done the I've gone to the St. Louis Brewery. I've done the tour at the St. Louis Brewery and it, it's cool. And like at the end of it, you know, they do the samples. The year I went, the sample was, and this is the precursor to Ultra and all those flavored ultras. They basically had the beer and they would put a shot of flavor in it. Oh. Like lime, yeah. passion fruit, or whatever the flavors were. And that's how they would figure out whether that was a viable product, like to go to the shelf as far as making, having the flavors in their beers. Mm -hmm. And now you see it like, I mean, they did it for pretty hot and heavy for a while, not as much as they do now. So, I mean, they're, a lot of times they're on the cutting edge. They have issues, but like a lot of times they're on the cutting edge. Which brings us to like, seeing that we're talking about beer and, and, and big beer, we're going to talk a little bit about the American pastime. Because mm. M happens to be a huge Red Sox fan. I am, I am. A huge um, Red Sox fan. So when you go to Fenway, what do you drink? Whatever. Uh, I usually go for the Sam Adams either when I, I usually drink a Sam summer. Okay. Um, I went, so I went twice uh, this year. I went in April, early April when they only allowed 12% uh, 
at capacity. So there's only 3,000 right. people at the stadium. And I had a Sam Summer and I had a Miller Lite. And then at the wild card game, I went with my husband and he went and bought me a beer and he's a big bud guy. So he just bought me, I was like, he's like, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't, there was like, it was so busy that I was like, get me whatever. Cause I, we had standing rooms. So we couldn't leave our area or else we would have right. lost our um, like nook. So right. I had, a, I had a bud light, but normally I go for a, like, I'll usually have a, I like the wicked easy. Um, the, what used to be Sam 76. That's a right. really, really good beer. And they have that, or I'll have a Sam summer. And so those are the, oh no, I went to, I went to the game three times. We went in the middle of the summer in August. It was hot. It was the, the game the, uh, when they scored more than 20 runs against the Rays. It was like 21 to nine. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, remember I had, uh, I had a Sam summer. No, no. I had a Cisco, um, whale's tail pale ale. And I had a truly cause it was hot. And I was like, I don't know, bring me a truly. <laughs> right. Sure, truly. It's like a million degrees. Um, so I usually that's no the but the beer scene at at Fenway is not great. Um, it's not that great. So we like going well, to I, the, which is int- which yeah is interesting to me because that was always the complaint with stadiums owned by Anheuser Busch hmm. that like that had the contracts yeah. like they would keep the other brewery in a really small section and now you see Sam is the major player yeah. in that stadium and i was always wondering because i don't go very often if that was still the case because i mean there's harpoons there narragansett's there you can find it's not you it's can hard find, to find you have to find it. yeah they have that they have lord hobo a lot of places um they have cisco cisco is actually owned by ab so that makes sense that they would have whale's tail um they used to have jack savvy I, my in-laws go every year. They took us and they got, and there was the vendor that my in-laws like to either sit in the Sam deck or the, or the Coke deck up top. Okay. Uh, depending if it's a night game, Sam deck, if it's a day game, the Coke deck, because the sun doesn't hit you in the face. Right. Um, and the, there was a beer bar, like a beer stand behind the Coke deck that was, um, that had, uh, that had, uh, but uh, Jack's Abbey, but they don't have Jack's Abbey anymore. At the, at, I, not that I've seen it. Um, the Trillium Fenway, the new like beer garden that Trillium built right near Fenway. We went, that's where we went before the game, uh, the wild card game. And it was awesome. Um, that was a really nice like place to hang out. So especially cause it was, it was chilly, but it wasn't bad. Um, right. Cause it's small inside, but they have great outdoors and it's right next to that. There's like a food hall there now. So we Where is that? In, like down in Kenmore? No, I, um, no, other on the other side. So like towards the hospital. So okay, you go, okay. down Brook, go down Brookline. There's like there's a movie theater. Okay. Like that building. Um, I forget what stop. There's a a Green Line stop right near there. So aside in Kenmore, it's more like it's towards Brookline. Like here's Game On, mm-hmm. which Walked, is their bar, and if you're going straight. Yeah. So walk, game on to the left, walk down that street, it's on the right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually have a funny story. I'll send you a picture of it. There used to be a bar down there. And one year we were up for the All-Star game in like 99. And we were just having a couple beers. And it was just a dive bar. And this band came in. And it, the name of the band was Random Road Mother. And they had a Nomar Garcia Parra song. And I, mm-hmm. I have it in this room I'm sitting in. Yeah, it's all Red Sox memorabilia. Oh no! So like all, yeah, yeah. like the whole room is all Red Sox memorabilia. So um, including my my wife's great uncle Hope, who used to who played for the Red Sox. Whoa! And so like we have like a team picture from back in the day. And do you remember McGreevy's, which was used to be down Brooklyn? Down. On, it sounds familiar. I lived in Boston a, from twenty two thousand six to two thousand nine. Yeah, it was owned by the guys that, in the Dropkick Murphys, and it yeah. was just a big Red Sox bar. Mm-hmm. Anyway, his picture used to hang over the bar at, at McGreevy's oh, before cool. he, the pandemic closed it, but yeah. whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, they, that used to be a dive bar, so I, I have that up in my room, up in this this room that's the home studio. So, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but another good spot there is the one that's in the wall. 
I've never been. That's the a bleacher, really the cool bleacher spot. bar. That was um the guys we were standing next to at standing room. Now the uh Mike, he and I have a text. He's a school teacher. We have a texting relationship now where we're like gonna hang out. Uh, he doesn't drink beer though. He doesn't drink, so we have to figure out something else to do. Um, but he and I watched all, like um he was telling me like he used to go to the bleacher bar a lot and that's where he would watch the games because you just got to like, I don't, I've never, it, I've never gone down there. I worked at Fenway for three months. My cousin went to college with the head of events. So in, oh, 2000, nice. in 2000, I was there the day they signed Daisuke Matsuzaka. He walked right by me. I've sat in John Henry's chair until my boss told me not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you probably yeah. should sit in the boss's chair. I was sitting, well, it was in his suite. We were cleaning it because uh, I did like catering slash like getting stuff ready for events, um, putting stuff away and whatnot. And so we were getting the room ready for because that was going to be like where Matsuzaka was going to hang out beforehand. And right. so I was like sitting in John Henry's chair and I like picked up his phone and I was like, trade Manny Ramirez, do this, do that. And they were like, <laughs> don't do that. And I hugged, I hugged the World Series trophy when no one was looking. Nice. Because <laughs> it nice. was out on display, and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, he just retired, Dice K. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So, interesting. Crazy. Yeah. There were so many people there that night, and I lived in Brighton at the time. I took the bus it was an easy commute, but it was like getting to the bus was like the throng of people and like, oh my gosh, it was wild. That was a wild day. Um, but it was cool working at Fenway. It was a lot of work, but it was a union job. and I got paid really well. It was actually, really? Really, yeah, it was a great job. I And then I was like, I'm tired because you never knew like the week you'd work like 70 hours one week and you'd work five hours the next week. Like it was all very dependent, but I became um, friends yeah. with all the security guys. It was fun. It was it was definitely an interesting job. Me and my coworkers were a, a a weird bunch, but there was it was fun. So getting to go into like the back, like area of Fenway, like it was cool. Did you go down into the locker rooms and that stuff? I never got to go into the locker rooms. I, I've been in the press room. I've been in the press box. Um, it was we. I got real flashbacks when we were at the wild card game because we were up so high. Right. Um, and there are all these, like, we were walking, we walked through this, like, back corridor, and I was like, oh, that's where the, like, chafing dishes are, like, kept, and, like, I, my husband was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I know where we are. That's, like, you go into that door, you take a left, yeah, so, but it was, like, the press box was cool, yeah, going into, like, the suites and all that stuff, yeah, it was <laughs> it was cool for like a it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good gig yeah that bleacher bar is cool because it's right like on the field and it's yeah in i the know wall. it's on our to-do list we usually buy tickets we really but it's only open it's only open like the, during the game they yeah. have the garage door closed yeah you have to um and you can make reservations it's on our to-do list um because we usually go to a game for our anniversary we were married in april my husband okay. and, I, and he's a huge Sox fan too. Um, I mean, we watch every game. That's what we do from like April until baseball. You like, like fever pitch. We watch every. We don't like go to every. I can't afford that. But we watch every. Like I can recite the Charlie Moore outdoor commercial. <laughs> 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 I like you know what I'm talking about. Charlie Moore is a little uh, out there. I have I have I have um, extra innings. Okay. Yeah. So, so you guys are basically like the embodiment of Fever Pitch. You know that movie? I do. I do. Yeah, that's but, like yeah. my favorite. That's like my All favorite right. movie. Yeah, that's a good. Do you movie. go to restaurants and put like the lobsters in your ears so you can't hear people saying the score? Yeah, um, I, I don't do that, but I do. Um, I've done like I'll mute like on Twitter or I'll like mute stuff so I don't see like the. I'm not that crazy. When the world, I was giving a talk during the ALCS or AL, no, it was ALDS. I was giving a talk at a, at a Scandinavian club. I was doing a beer talk on Scandinavia beer culture. And I had like my phone out on the table so I could see like the score while I was talking. So every couple of minutes I would just like 
glance down because it was like incre it's incredibly important to me. I love baseball. My husband and I during the pandemic got really into Korean baseball because it was the only baseball on TV. Okay. We would watch the games every night. So it, it's on our to-do list to go to Korea to go to a Korean baseball game. So do you know any breweries in Korea? The beer scene in Korea is not great, is what I've heard. Um, but I I would definitely like do some research if I went over there. Uh, we're big LG Twins fans. That's our team. Okay. Um, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> they got they, they do the Korean baseball, the KBO, they the way that their postseason works is whoever has the best record in baseball automatically goes to the series, the world series. So everybody, everybody plays each other. They play each other. Do you, and the, so, and, but then the fifth ranked team plays the fourth ranked team, but the fourth ranked team starts a game ahead. So they're already, really? up, yeah. And that's, and then whoever wins that plays the third ranked team. And then the third ranked team is a game ahead. And then whoever plays the second ranked team Whoever wins that plays the second rate team. And then that seems wicked complicated. No, it actually like it makes the regular season, it makes the games more important because like you know, how long like, is a regular season? just as long as ours. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They play, I think like April to October. But there and then each team, there are only ten teams, but you play each person like there's like eighty games. You play each team like eight times. I don't remember. But it was, yeah. And then each team is owned by a corporation. So like the LG Twins or the Samsung Lions. Right. Um, it's cool. And they're, they're allowed three international players. So they're sometimes like, there's a, there was a player that was playing in the KBO who now plays. He was so good. They, the Major League Baseball wanted him back. Um, and I forget he plays for the Brewers now, but I don't remember his name. Um, but yeah, it was... It was, cool. interesting. it was really interesting and it was like a great you know i want baseball i miss baseball uh we'll watch this this is base it was baseball you know and it was it wasn't live because it was on at like midnight but right, es right. espn showed a game a day they would just like pick it pick a game it was on almost every day so and they all play each other at the same time so there's no like day night game oh okay so. yeah it was so weird because like I don't know, sports and that whole thing, like, didn't really work. Like, some of them translated better than others. Like, yeah. hockey translated pretty well without a crowd. Yeah, Football hockey was, was too weird, and Football baseball was, weird. was really weird. The quiet baseball was... When we went to the game that was 12% capacity, the Sox were playing the... And that felt really weird, being at Fenway with only 3,000 people. And our, our tickets were 20 bucks. And we were down on the right field, um, fe not field level, but like right before they turned into bleed, like the grandstand. Oh yeah, I love those seats. It was they were great seats, and it was because it was a Monday night game in April. They were twenty one bucks, so I was like, "We're going!" And so my husband and I drove up. We brought a ton of blankets, and then the guys. You, the thing about um, there was like it was so quiet that like there was like four guys behind us and they had obviously been drinking and they started heckling the players and they were hilarious, but you could hear everything. And so security was like, you, you guys have to stop. And the guy was like, what are you mouthing off for security? Like, yeah, this and that. And they were like, you out. And yeah, bounced in the third. It was great. It was like classic Fenway. It was like, it was a lot of fun. So yeah. yeah. The it picture cool. I'm actually going to send you for a commission is actually my wife and I at Fenway. Like, oh my gosh, drawing Fenway. Oh boy. So yeah, I've so never... I'm gonna, I'll I'll send it when your workload um and get it done when your workload goes down. Yeah, next next year, please. But that would oh, I hope I can draw Fenway. That's um, that's. Oh, it's just the wall. Okay, that I can do. It's it's, it's in those. It's basically in those seats you're, you're talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. But facing. So like. The that, wall yeah. was over my mm -hmm. shoulder. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. You'll be able to do it. You'll be able to. Do I can do that. I can do that. It, it'll be it'll be easy peasy Hopefully. for you to do that. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, this was fun. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't really talk much about beer. That's okay. But that's okay. 
Right, you probably talk about beer pretty much all day. I do talk about beer a lot. You can ask my so, family that. This was, a, this was a nice sort of round discussion of everything. Cartoon, baseball, baseball comics. Yeah. So we have a, Yeah, we have a great, we go to, um, we have a double A affiliate near our house, the Hartford Yard Goats. We oh, yeah, I love, their, yeah. I love their hats. Yeah, yeah. We go, I'm a big like, hat guy, baseball hat guy. I, I like the, I like yeah. the, um, when they do the um, La Copa, when they do this the Spanish series. Oh yeah, where they have the like and the, they have the, and they have the skull, the, the, right? the, the skull. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then the Hickory Crawdads have like an alpaca on theirs. Oh, that's cool. And I used to raise alpacas for a while. Sure. So, uh, so <laughs> is it weird how people come to beer from different angles? It's nice. There's, yeah, yeah, so, for, yeah, there's beers for so, so I had to buy that hat because it had a, a llama on it. It was an al- llama, not an alpaca. Yeah. Shoot, I have to correct myself. So that, yeah, anyway. Minor league baseball is great. I'm a huge, we have, in our town I live in, we have a college futures league. And then um, when they play Wednesdays and Thursdays, it's $7 to get in free parking and $2 PBR tall cans. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, we go there, we go there a lot. We actually have our the minor one of the minor league teams for the um, Orioles is like basically right behind the house. Oh, nice! So every like Friday when they do fireworks, we can mm-hmm. sit in the backyard and see the fireworks. That's nice. Yeah, with the fire. So the, there, the yeah. dogs aren't happy about it every yeah. Friday night, but you know, so I mean, they're really close to the Bowie Bay Sox, so like right over. Oh, okay, there, yeah. Like a stone okay. throw from here, so well, they're right behind our house basically. So. Yeah, so we go over there quite often. Nice. So there you go. All right. <laughs> this was fun. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I, I loved it. I was nervous today because I, I knew we had a lot of topics to talk about, but I, I didn't want to go he- too heavy in beer, so I'm glad it worked out pretty well-rounded. Of course. So enjoy your trip to Allagash next week. I will. I will. I can't wait. And, uh, I, they're nice people, so I'm excited. And I love um, Maine. Maine is a great place, so. And your website has got stuff up for sale. So yes. it's pintsandpanels.com. And, and there's all, I bought this cool pin set. Oh, yeah. See? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yep. Crispy got the crispy pin. boy. And it, it's yeah. got a hop and it's got um, the little beer, oh, the dancing beer glass. It's got the beer. It's like shrinky dinks. I know they actually. So it's my sticker company that makes them. And I'm going to do a bunch more stickers, uh, pin series because people. I want to do a lambic one with like a lambic basket, a cool ship, and a tumbler. I want to do an Oktoberfest one with like an Alpen hat and a mask, like a like a Stein. I have a bunch of. I the pins are really cool, so I'm I'm. Yeah, like those are, really those like are really cool because the beer I sent you that wombat beer. Mm-hmm. So. People are like, get it over. Stop talking, Rob. But so that Wombat beer was basically, so it was done by the local brewery down the street from my house. And we're all fish fans, the band Fish. So when we, we went to Hershey, they did some shows up in Hershey. Anyway, they did a song. One of their songs is called Wombat. And they did a hot chocolate song, You Sexy Thing. And mm-hmm. they went into Wombat and they started singing Sexy Wombat. And that's why it's a chocolate beer. Oh. And I had I had pins made with that logo on it from the same company, Sticker Mule. Oh, nice! Yeah. So yeah, so we so we gave we gave some of those away with people. So it's the same idea that you don't shrinky things. It's so, a, like it's a great like you don't have the start like the setup cost of enamel. They're not expensive, and people really like them. It's a nice that's a it's a nice statement. So I'm into the I'm gonna make a lot more pins. Yeah, I like I like those pins too. So anyway, people watch and go to her M's website, pisonpanels.com. Hit the link for the store. She's got all kinds of stuff. Lots of stuff on there. Yeah. T-shirts. Christmas time is coming. People like beer related gifts. Or so I've heard. That's so I've also, heard, I've also heard that. <laughs> so thank you em it was great talking to you yeah. we'll have you on again after maybe after your book comes out sure. we'll do a little red Sox round table oh, maybe sample great. some beers 
yes. um, later on in the season. So I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Of course. Be safe. Yes, likewise. Thank you. I'll See talk ya. to you soon. Bye. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye. Oop. That was fun. A little Red Sox talk at the end there. But anyway, thanks, everybody, for watching. Tomorrow night, we actually have Ty from Hysteria on and Lost Ark Distilling. And we are going to be mixing some drinks, I think. Christmas-type drinks. We'll be doing it a little bit live. We have, a, like, a Mexican hot chocolate that sounds amazing. So, anyway, see you guys tomorrow night. And um, tastings this weekend. We're actually doing, on Saturday, we're getting all the collaborations we've done in the last year together, or most of them, um, with Hysteria, with Monument City, with Firm, with True Respite, and we're doing a big sampling. We have live music in the store so come on by two to five on saturday and i'll see you guys then